Hi, Alita here with Create Your Future. We are giving away a free course, how to find your blocks to manifest anything fast. The link is in the description box below, so check it out. And then I, ha I have courses available as well, and each of those are $20 off. So manifest exactly what you desire. Foolproof, get your SP back. Manifesting with an age gap, a relationship with an age gap. Anti-aging and the law of assumption and turning back your biological clock and how to do that. The key to manifesting anything quickly and then the very last one is why is it okay to manifest a specific person into a relationship with you when they are already in a relationship with someone else and how to do that. So those, all of those courses are available for $20 off of the original price. And then I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, of course, and I would love to work with you. The coaching is at this point 50% 50, uh, 50 off. So I'm looking forward to uh, all of you uh, booking a session with me so we can meet and, and work through whatever it is that your heart's desiring and help me let me help you manifest the things that your heart desires through all the different things that, that really make it easier for you to let go of resistance and blocks and move in to that shift into that desire of yours and make it real internally so that it manifests externally perfectly into your reality. All right, I wanna talk about manifesting today. Of course, right? This is the Create Your Future, so we talk about manifesting. And what I wanna talk about specifically is everything is you push out, right? And that Everything and everyone must conform to your thoughts and that you are the operant power. And to apply that to our everyday life, not just with specific people, you know, the, the, our, our love interest, but with everything in life. Since June, my printer has not been working until this past Thursday. It just stopped connecting to the Wi-Fi. And so, of course, you know, you call text and everybody does all their thing and still it did not connect. And then I sort of just let it go and uh, save my files and figured out, print them out some other time later when it did work because I knew eventually it would. Then I decided, well, you know what, you're the operant power of your reality. Everything must conform to you, not just people. And so, and everything is the meaning you give it. And the meaning that I'm giving it is that I am... And the, uh, the operant power of my reality, I am in control of my reality, so therefore that printer has to print because I say it does. <laughs> I'm in control. It must conform to me. This is my quantum bubble reality. My consciousness, and in my consciousness, everything must conform to whatever it is I say. And so living from that self-concept that I am God of my reality, that I am in control of my reality, that everything and everyone must conform to whatever it is I choose to experience. And in this case, I wanted and choose, I was choosing, I selected to experience my printer working. Knowing that, literally, I thought at that point connecting to the Wi-Fi, there's nothing wrong with the printer itself, it just would not connect to the Wi-Fi. And typically I was having issues with the Wi-Fi in our area anyway. So anyway, so that's way back in June, and then eventually, and I just wanna let it go, and I just saved my files to print out some other day. And then um, I decided, you know what, what I already said, this is my, I'm, I'm the operant power, and you're gonna print. You're gonna to connect to the Wi-Fi. So I, I was only a couple of days later, I decided to go back up and do what you do to connect it to the Wi-Fi. I did that, and guess what, it's a success. It was a beautiful word to see on the screen of my printer. So then I thought, oh, Ray, I can print now because it's successfully um, connected to my Wi-Fi. So I, print, I attempted to print something and it didn't print. It said web services was not connected and I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Um, so I'm like, okay, fine, I've got other things to do. I just let it go. But every time I walked by it, I knew, I knew from day one that this thing was going to comply to me, that it was going to work, and it was going to work without buying a new printer, it was going to work without spending money for text to come here, which is what, one of the options I had, which I had already did for something else earlier in the year, and so I wasn't spending another couple hundred dollars to do any of that. So I decided that it was going to, it was going to just comply to me and start working. And, okay, so then um, this past week, 
I sat down on my computer to do some work and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna call the company again and see, tell them what is happening again. Because since I had talked to them, it did connect to the Wi-Fi, but it still wouldn't print. So I called them and I talked to them. This was the, um, the printer company. And the tech was so incredibly nice. And the whole time I'm intending that this is gonna work, that I'm gonna have a, a, a tech who really solves the problem and that everything manifests as I choose it to and that I will be able to print today. So anyway, we went through the, and then I will stay calm. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so um, we went through the whole process. It was an hour till he remotely did some things on my computer and then he explained what was wrong and why it wouldn't the web service thing wasn't connecting and he fixed it and i have been printing ever since so now what neville goddard says is okay that looked like rationally it worked itself out through the normal process of life well, of course you have something that's not functioning you call the, the experts and they fix it that's not a manifestation but the bottom line it is because i had already gone through all that stuff and it didn't work everybody no nope, everybody just wanted me to spend more money and i'm like nope this is going to manifest itself into working properly without me spending any more money. So it did. And I I just remember Neville Goddard saying it'll happen so naturally or so rationally, it seems, that we, we discount that we actually were the operant power, the one who pushed it out, the one who actually create, created the possibility or selected that uh, possibility for it to, to be repaired and, and work. And so I did manifest that. But here's the, the thing that I really wanted to share. Yeah, I did all that and I did manifest it being repaired and I've been printing a lot lately. So anyway, um, but the thought that came to me later after that was, okay, so what did I do differently with that? That I pushed that out seeming impossible, especially with what the techs were telling me from a couple different technicians, that it wasn't possible. Well, I didn't believe them. I believe my inner imagination. I believe my inner power, my source of who I am, God, right? I'm the operant power. So I just, I overrode them. But I didn't argue in my mind with the text. I didn't go back to all the history I've had on this. Um, I didn't do any of that. I didn't look at the computer, or the printer, I mean, and say, why aren't you printing? I mean, Oh, and then have all the memories of the past of how, how well you used to print for me and, and, and how you're ruining the quality of my life and you're making my job so much more difficult because I need the reports printed out or whatever it is that I'm doing. No, I, I didn't argue with it in my mind. I didn't have doubts that it wasn't going to manifest. Well, how could this manifest? You know, I mean, look, at, I'm looking at the 3D and it's not working, you know, and then I, and I related all that to when we're trying to manifest a specific person because I have clients that come to me and even I've experienced this in the past where I, where something that I really, really want, that I'm very attached to emotionally like another person or maybe some money or find, you know, something with finances something with your job, whatever it is that you're really attached to emotionally that has a high charge to it emotionally. And especially what I hear from my clients is with, with another person, like a specific person, is that they're constantly looping over for me what happened before they broke up, what's happening now since they broke up what they say, what, what the person's been saying, what the person's been doing, the fact that they've been ghosted and they'll go on so, social media and they're not, you know, they're ghosted and, and or many, many, many different scenarios. And I'm guilty of all this on my own too, you know, at times in my life. So it's, I'm not being critical, but what I am saying is we tend to, with our specific people, with the thing that we truly, truly want, we, we give it so much of our energy, but not on the vision of it already being accomplished and, and manifested, but on the current situation, which is, I don't have my SP, I'm not with the person I love, and I miss them, and I cry for them, and I'm spiraling, and I'm going downhill, and I had a difficult time. You know what I do with that printer now? I understand a printer emotionally is very different than a human being that you're in love with, but it's all the same as far as energy. Okay, so when I looked at that printer, I could have been angry. I could have been angry at the text. 
I could have been, who, who were working on it earlier in, um, when it first happened. I could have been um, angry with myself. I could have been angry with the Wi-Fi. I could have uh, just kept looping over the story of telling everyone my computer doesn't work. I can't get my work done. I need to print out this, blah, blah, blah. You know, I could have made a real sad sob story and stayed in that state of not having the printer work. But what did I do? Because I didn't really care. If it printed, it printed. Someday, it, I would, if I had to buy another printer, I didn't care. I got to the point, and why didn't I care? Not because I didn't want the printer to work, but because I knew it was going to. I didn't care about what was going on in the 3D anymore. No matter how many times I pushed, clicked on print with my computer and nothing happened in my printer, I didn't care. Because I knew it was going to work. I knew it would manifest because I imagined it, I saw it working because I lived from an inner conversation that it was going to manifest. And I didn't go into a lot of hard work and stress myself out. I got to the place where I just simply decided when I walked by the printer, I just immediately had a mental thought like, I know it's gonna manifest. I don't know how, I don't know when, I just know it will. And that was all I did. I knew it. I lived from that assumption that it was mine, that it was going to print someday when it was ready, I suppose. You know, whenever it was going to manifest was, is not up to me, right? Everything has its appointed time, isn't that what God has said? So I didn't, I didn't stress over it. I walked by it and I see it and I'm like, I know that it's going to print. I just don't know how or when. What if we apply some of that same, that same principle, that same mindset to the people we want to manifest into our lives as our love partners, our, our life partners? What if we applied the fact got so confident in who we are? Because the reason I could have that confidence that I know my printer is gonna print against what seemed to be not possible, I know it will because I'm the operant power, right? That's the reason I knew it would. I'm in control of my reality. I tell things what to do, they don't tell me. I, so with your SP, you tell them what to think and feel. You tell them what to act and how to treat you by your self-concept. You are in control. They must conform to you. So you live from the, the self-concept that I'm God of my reality. Everything and everyone must conform to me. No one has any free will but me and I apply the meaning to everything. I could have applied all kinds of negative meanings and storylines to that silly printer, but no, I just looked at it when I walked by and say, I know you're gonna print. I know it. I know it's going to manifest. I don't know how, I don't know when, I just know it will. And I actually live from that internally. And I mean, I even said to friends, well, it'll, all, it'll, it'll be fixed one day. I didn't know how. So all you have to do now with your special, special person is live from that state of being that you are the operant power. You are in control of them. They are not in control of you. You are calling the shots. If they're ignoring you, then there's something in you pushing that out. Stop thinking that. Stop going over the old story of them rejecting you, the old story of not being good enough. Stop telling yourself, well, I just have to work on my self-concept so I'm more worthy and valuable and treasured. No. Go to the ultimate self-concept. I am the power of my reality, nothing, no one else. And if I live from that state of being that I am the power, the ultimate power, the operant power of my reality, and that everything and everyone must conform to me, where does low self-esteem come in? Your God, does God have low self-esteem? No, no. So, so it's not about, it's all about, do you see yourself as the operant power of your reality and that you're in control? And that's what I had gotten to with that printer, to the point where I realized I'm in control of this thing because this is my reality and I'm pushing everything out. So it is going to work. But get to that point and you're not gonna feel unworthy or or oh, low self-esteem and forget the old stories that, you know, this and that happened when I was younger and I've had this trauma stuff going on and I can't trust people. If you're the operant power of your reality, you don't have to worry about trusting people. You tell them to be faithful. You are in control. You are the power, the source of everything that's taking place in your life, good or bad. 
And there's a verse in the Bible that talks about, you know, I, that, that, and it's talk about God that has the power to bring life or to, to end life. And I can't remember the exact words, of course, but you have that power. You have the power to produce in your life, to create in your life, to select is the real word, to select the, the lifestyle you want, whether it be good or bad, you are selecting it all. So lay aside all of the ego stuff and live truly in your power. You are, tell yourself every day, this is your self-concept. I am the operant power of my reality. That means I am control of everything and everyone. Nothing and no one has any free will in my reality but me. Remind yourself of that when you look at them saying and doing things out there in the world to you in the 3D. Remember, it's a reflection of your past thoughts. They don't have any power over you. You have power over them. They don't condition and control you. You're conditioning and controlling them. But you're allowing them to have power when you give it to them by saying, I'm not worthy. Um, they don't love me. And you, you, you keep looping over and over the old negative story of rejection and telling it to everything and everyone. You can't do that. You have to decide what your vision is. Know, first of all, that you're the operant power. Everything must conform to your thoughts. Everyone must conform to your thoughts and that you give the meaning to everything. And then you know that, you know you're in control. And then you live like that and you have a vision for what you want. You know what you want. You want your, your, your specific person to love you and adore you and be committed to you and only you. Okay, if that's what you want or anything else that you choose that you want for your life in any area, not just a specific person, then you know what you want. Now, what do you do with that? Well, you let go of the old story totally and completely turn your back on it. See, I wouldn't allow myself to, to ruminate <laughs> or go over in my mind all the, all the negative things that I had experienced with that printer and all the negative things I had heard experts tell me about that printer and about my Wi-Fi and about my computer. I decided, no, I am in control. This stuff will work because I say it will work. I don't care what anybody else says. And so I stopped. I did not allow myself to think of any of the negative stuff, any of the negative stories. I told her, I saw the printer when I walked by and I said, you're, you're going to manifest. I just don't know when or how. And I knew it. And that's what you do with your SP. That's what you do with everything in your life, your health, everything, all of it. You're the operant power. You live from the place of the vision. You've got to know what your vision is. Be detailed about what it is exactly that you want and then formulate a scenario for your mind, script it out um, if you want and live from that. And here's the key, the story, the new story, the vision that you want to manifest versus the current reality that you're experiencing must be stronger than the old story. Meaning, you must give it more of your energy, more of your time, more of your focus, more of your consciousness than the old story. And that's why I said, turn your back on the old story and think only of the new. The old story is a distraction and you don't wanna go there anymore. Stop telling that story to yourself mostly and to anybody else that will listen and only tell the new story to yourself. And if you have people in your world who do not understand the law of assumption, don't tell them either. Keep it a secret, Neville Goddard says. And just live from internally being the person your heart's designed to be with the person your heart's designed to be with if it's a specific person. And stay there, same way with health. Be that healthy person internally, no matter what's going on externally. And do not... So the differences between my compute, my printer, and, and, and manifesting anything else or a specific person what's highly charged emotionally is that I, I, didn't, I didn't loop any negative stories. I just saw the printer there and said, okay, I know you're not working right now, but you will because I am an operant power and I, I decided that's what you're gonna do. You will manifest and work properly. And I didn't argue with it. We argue with her internally with our SPs. I didn't loop over negative stories internally with the printer or about the printer, but we do that with our specific people or money or whatever it is. We come up with a million things to think about that are negative. I didn't think I had low self-esteem. I didn't think I don't have trust issues, that I have trust issues. I didn't think anything negative. I didn't have doubts that it wasn't going to manifest because I know 
my power. You have to live first. That's your self-concept from knowing you are the power. Know your power. You know your power, you've got, that. you've got it made. Anything and everything will manifest exactly as you choose it to. But with the printer and the, the thing that I saw that, that we do is the printer, I didn't argue, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have any feelings about anything other than it was gonna manifest. Do that with your SP. Ignore the stuff that's going on. Don't, don't, don't expect apologies. Just know they're gonna come back from the end. You see them living with you or whatever it is that you want them to be with you and live there. All I saw was the printer fixed. I don't care how, I don't care when. Do that with your SP. The biggest thing that we do that causes us to not manifest as quickly as we want is we argue and we loop over in our minds the negative stuff. We, with, we pay attention to the 3D more than we should. Be the observer, let it go, and stay only in the vision. The key is to be is to replace the old with the new. And the only way you can do that is to give the new more attention than you do the old. It will shrivel up, fade, and go away if you do. It's kind of like you read a good book and then you know you get so involved with the characters and you love them and you love the storyline and then you're reading it and you fall asleep and then you dream about it and you wake up in the morning, it's still on your mind, you can feel it, you know, the feelings of whatever was you were reading about that story. And as you go through the day and you're busy and then something will cause you to think of it and you get those nice warm feelings again, you need to make your vision that powerful. And you need to be that in love with it so that it is something that stays with you all day long with beauty and love and joy. Fall in love with your new story. And you can't do that if you're over here arguing with the old or letting it, the ego, give you every rational reason why this isn't ha gonna happen. Could have did that. I had plenty of experts telling me to get a new printer. But nope, I chose not. Choose not. Choose not to let the ego talk you into doing what you don't want and just make sure you are. And you're the offering power. Fall in love with what you want and live from there only and feel those feelings. You, you have to do it so much. Like when you're reading that book, you have to become so absorbed with it so that it's with you all day long and you walk around. How do I live from the end? Because I am so absorbed in it that it becomes automatic for me to feel the feelings of who it is I'm choosing to be. And when I'm doing that, I'm literally becoming that person. I am that person. That's why I'm feeling those feelings. When you're reading the book, you become one with the characters, you become one with the storyline, become one with your vision, fall in love with it, and all day long it will stay with you, all night long it will stay with you. When you wake up in the morning, it'll still be on your heart, you're in love with it. And the next thing you know, it's your actual 3D reality, just like my printer. <laughs> I didn't have any clue that day it was gonna work until everything just fell in line. That's what Neville Goddard says, it falls in line naturally. And then you will be like, oh my gosh, we're together again. This is, you know, and so key to everything is fall in love with your story. Think that and feel that more than you do the old story. You live from there and know that I'm the operant power and get rid of all that silly stuff that I'm not worthy of. You're the operant power, live from that. Live from that. If it doesn't feel right at first, that doesn't matter. Still live from it. Still live from it because you are the source. And no one can help do that for you but you. Okay, if you have any questions about this video, I would love to, for you to leave a comment. Um, and I mean, I could keep going on and on, but I really don't want this to go much longer. And um, so leave a comment if you have a question or you just want to comment on the video in some way. And or book a session with me and we can work on this in greater depth and help you in your specific area. Okay, blessings. Thank you.